What's up, guys? It's your boy, Borsa Boy 103. Today, we're gonna be doing the match preview for Rayo Vallecano versus Barcelona in La Liga, one of our final, most difficult away games left of the season, where we face a very, very tough opponent, which we haven't beaten in the last three matches. Rayo Vallecano have been a very, very strong team this season, and Barcelona are yet to beat them but with us being one step closer to clinching the league title this will be a very very important three points for the blaugrana but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 10 p.m. local time. So we are playing an hour later than usual. And this match will be taking place at the Estadio de Vallecos, where Barcelona have not won in their last three matches. And also last season, following the match, is when Ronald Koeman was sacked. And the referee for this match has also been confirmed. On the pitch, it will be Gil Manzano. And on the VR, it will be Jose Luis Gonzalez Gonzalez. And there also are reports, by the way, that Carcelo de la Grande and also Mateo Lagos will be retiring at the end of this season or being forced to retire very very crazy let's start off by taking a look at the league table where barcelona currently sit top of la liga on 76 points after playing 30 matches we do have 24 wins four draws and two losses look at our last five games in the league three wins and two draw we are of course 11 points clear of second place real madrid who are sat on 65 points after playing 30 matches they have 20 wins five draws five losses their last five games in the league three wins two losses and of course atletico madrid who we beat last weekend sit on 60 points we're 16 points clear of them they're five points off real madrid then so see are six points off Atletico Madrid. So again, the spaces are slowly but surely creeping up in the top four of La Liga, so to speak. Again, Barcelona have a firm hand on the league title as they push in the last eight games to secure it. 11 points clear. And of course, Real Madrid will be playing later on today. They do play Girona. So they will be in Barcelona just a couple minutes down the road from the camp. Now, hopefully our Catalan brothers can uh, do us a favor. That way we can win the league a bit earlier. I would absolutely love to clinch the league against Espanyol and also relegate them at the same time. That would just be written in the stars. But Madrid face Gerona. That should be a win for Madrid. Of course, Gerona sitting around mid-table, but you never know. They could pull out a result. We just nearly beat them there, of course, 1-0. But again, slowly but surely trying to clinch this lead. We need about, I think, four more wins and a draw to clinch the lead title. And of course, Rayo Vallecano is one step in the next direction. And if you take a look at our opponents in Rayo Vallecano, they are currently sat in ninth place in La Liga on 40 points. After playing 30 matches, they have 10 wins. 10 draws and 10 losses. The perfect 10 there for Rayo Vallecano. The last five games in all in the league is of course two losses, two draws, and one win. So for the quality of their squad and what they were expected to do this season, so far they're doing all right. They were of course at the beginning of the year competing for those European spots, but slowly but surely they have fallen off from competing for those areas. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Rayo Vallecano, who this season have been one of the more difficult teams to be facing off, especially against the big teams. The big teams have struggled against the team against Rayo Vallecano. And in our first game this season, we struggled as well. In the very first game of La Liga, we played Rayo Vallecano at the Spotify camp now, and we did draw this match nil nil of course Busquets picked up a red card I believe in the 89th minute but a very very strong team but again first day fresh, fresh off preseason I think Barcelona were still a bit rusty of course Conde was still not registered or he wasn't fit something like that and we've already signed him by now and of course you had Aruha playing at right back I don't think we had a Bellerin or Alonso yet uh center back pairing is something we can see uh, tomorrow possibly of course Christian Shane is going to be ruled out yeah Dori Abel playing at left back very similar midfield and a very very noticeable front three as well but Ray Vallecano just sat back, soaked it all up, and they had a defensive masterclass. And to be fair, Barcelona going forward weren't really that great. I remember Lewandowski missing a, a big chance, but apart from that, it was pretty much, <laughs> it was a long time ago, eight months ago, August, you know, we're not going to remember that. But nonetheless, in the first game, we did draw, of course, nil, nil. Now, take a look at Ray Vallecano's last six matches in all competition. In the last match, they lost to Rio Sociedad 2-1. They beat Osasuna 2-1, big win for them. They lost to Atletico Madrid 2-1. They drew 1-1 with Valencia. Drew 2 2 with Gerona and lost 3 0 to Rayo Vallecano. And lost 3 0 to Rayo Vallecano, 3 0 to Celta Vigo. Now, in Rayo Vallecano's last, I think, I think all their matches, 
from now until like January. They've only won like two games. And of course, the Osasuna win is one of them. And they had another victory. So in recent months, Vallecano have not been doing too well. That's why they're dropping from, you know, the community for those European spots into a round mid table. Because over the past few months, they haven't been getting the result. They haven't been picking up victories. And then they have two wins or one win in their last 10 matches. But let's take a look at the last three games in all competition. Firstly is the 2-1 loss to Atletico Madrid. We talked about this in the Atletico Madrid preview as well. I did watch this game again right by Akano. First half, they were very, very poor. Of course, getting that red card from Florent Lejeune uh, didn't really help them. It was after a VAR check. I think it was a foul on the pole. They pulled one back. It was a very much a consolation goal from Fran Garcia, their left back, who of course is on loan, I believe, from Real Madrid. But in this match, they tried to compete but after conceding two goals in the space of 10 minutes in the first half. They couldn't end up breaking down Atletico Madrid's strong defense. Next up is their 2-1 win against also Suna, this was those this of them was a must-win game. Of course, they're uh, right behind Asuna as well, trying to climb up the table. Of course, earn some more money if you finish higher in the table as well. Very, very uh, strong performance of them, especially at home. And their players obviously turn up for the game after not turning up against Atletico Madrid in the previous home match at the Vallecos. And finally, the last match of all competition was a 2-1 loss to Real Sociedad at the Anahueta. Again, Lejeune comes back in this match, doesn't own goal. It was more Real Sociedad needing a win in this match than via Kano trying to, you know, bounce back on form. So Sudan haven't won their past few games and the wins, you know, secured that fourth place spot for Champions League, of course. Still no race for that. They have, I think they're six points ahead of Betis and Villarreal, so they're closely behind them. They need the victory. They got it at home. They did compete Rio Valle, Rio Valle Kano nonetheless, but in the end, Real Sociedad at home as well. They were just too strong. So overall, final thoughts on Real Vallecano. They're, of course, a very, very strong team in the league. Very strong in defense, compact in the midfield as well. And they are clinical. They're very well managed by the manager, Andrea Eirola, who, of course, was rumored to be leaving them midseason when he was doing very well with them having them in the European spots. Apparently, Leeds wanted him. A few other clubs in the Premier League as well, but he ended up staying. Again, very good tactical manager. He's brought, you know, Real Vallecano up over the past few years, and he's done absolute wonders for them. And also, he has a great mind in the knowledge of football. Players have got four, of course, they have quite a few. I've talked about three go in the midfield, their captain, Raul De Thomas up front, Falcao off the bench, uh, Dimitri Evsky in goal, who was with Link with Barcelona a lot. Um, I think his name, I forget the, the bald guy's name. <laughs> But he's very good as well. He's been scoring a lot of bangers recently as well. I think his name starts with an I, but it's slipping my mind right now. But again, and of course, Fran Garcia at right at left back. He's been playing very well for them this season on loan, of course, from Real Madrid. So again, the quality is there. They have some experienced players and some young players, and they are a very, very strong and compact team. Barcelona in this match have to be very, very clinical. Like Tavi says, we'll talk about this in a few seconds. Creating chances against Vallecano is difficult, so when you do create those chances and you do have a chance in front of goal, you must be clinical. Let's now take a look at the squad list. The squad list for this match has been released and confirmed, and it is as follows. Ter Stegen, Aruho, Pedin, Lewandowski, Ansu Fati, Farad, Enaki Pena, Alonso, Alba, Kessie, De Jong, Rafinha, Kunde, Eric Garcia, Alejandro, Bale, Casado, Gabi, Pablo Torre, Chadir Riyad, Arnaud Tanez, and Laman Yamal. So from the last squad list, of course, Busquets suspended for this match after picking up his fifth yellow card and comes in Chad Riyad. And also we have the appearance of Casado as well. Still no Christensen and Uzman Dembele, but Chavi does give us a huge update in the press conference to follow. Now, of course, eight games off of the season, yellow card suspensions will be very, very important to watch out for. And in this match, there are two players who are available, of course, who are one yellow card away from suspension. Those two players are Franck Kessier and Ferran Torres. If either of them pick up a yellow card in this match, they will be suspended for Saturday's match against Real Betis. Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning, of course, he's asked a lot of questions from the media about, of course, the upcoming match, securing La Liga, transfer window, Messi, his renewal, uh, quotes coming in from Real Madrid and Ancelotti as well. Let's see what the manager had to say this morning in the presser. He came out saying that tomorrow was going to be a difficult game against Real Vallecano. They are very intense. It will be difficult. And then he was asked about Busquets being suspended, who will fill the role in the pivot. He said that Eric Garcia won the officer to replace Busquets. We also have Frankie de Jong. We also called up Mark Casado. We have more options, but Eric did very well in the LJ, and he is a possibility. They asked about Dembele and Christensen, and the Dembele will return on Saturday. He's fine, like Christensen. Both will be in the squad list this Saturday for the Betis match. Fantastic news there. 
asked about La Liga. We are, of course, 24, uh, this for, uh, 24 points left to play, and we're 11 points clear. It's a significant gap, but it's not definitive. We'll be closer with each victory. I don't think about records. He was asked here. We have nine one-nil victories. The record is 10. I think about winning the league. You have to uh, remember that we were in, where we were last year. The comparison is that, not the team that won trebles. Then he was asked about Messi's return, whether the La Liga president should help uh, with Messi's return. So that's a question for Javier Tebez. There are some regulations. You have to comply with them. Nothing more. Everyone looks after their own interests. Ours is to win La Liga, especially after the Champions League elimination. I think that Barcelona fans will value it a lot. Then asked about Ancelotti's quotes recently saying that Ancelotti is white. There's not only an 11 point uh, gap difference. If I look at the quality of Barcelona and Real Madrid, I take that as a great compliment. It says a lot about what we're doing in the league this season in La Liga. He was asked about the dinner last night, of course, last night in Barcelona, Pepe Costa, Leo Messi, Sergio Busquets, and Jordi Alba met for dinner. Chai was asked about it, about the dinner. He said that I went for desserts with them afterwards as a joke. He said, nope, they haven't told me anything on Busquets and Alba telling him what Messi said and stuff like that. Then he was asked about coaching Messi, saying that coaching Messi, that's a hypothesis. We are focused now on the Liga, nothing else. I like to talk about Leo, but we have a very good relationship, but now's the time to focus. Correo Vallecano. He was asked about his nickname given by the Madrid media called the uh, Gardener, saying that being called the Gardener dates back to several years. I take it as a joke, and of course, I don't mind it. He was asked about the Atletico Madrid results, and that we, uh, we were very good with the command of the game. We understood our philosophy, and our game model was very good. We saw a great Barcelona, but tomorrow will be difficult. I don't see a really match for the team. So Xavi was honing this down the press conference, saying that, look, this match is going to be difficult, a small pitch, difficult side. I expect us to play a very, very bad game, but hopefully we'll get the result. That was what that was the message that Xavi was transmitting. He was asked about his renewal. He said that we have been talking with the president. I have a very good relationship with him. There are talks and there will be no problems renewing my contract if, of course, we win La Liga. Then asked about Ter Stegen. I know Ter Stegen personally because I played with him. He's a very methodical person, and right now he's the best goalkeeper in the world. He helps us even more because of our way of playing. Asked about more about winning La Liga, saying I haven't thought about whether I prefer to win La Liga. I want to, what I want most is to win, but it won't be easy. It will be some difficult games left to go, and there's a lot of points to be played. The goal is to win it. I'm focused on that. He was asked whether or not he would prefer to win it at home or away. He said, I don't care, but if I could choose, of course, it would be at home. Then asked about Gavi, saying I don't have a feeling that Gavi's receiving more kicks in recent matches. He just goes into duels a lot. Physically, he's very strong. He wins many duels. I tell him to watch out. The other day, he picked up a yellow card very early against Atletico Madrid, but he held up, of course, very well. That's, of course, some discipline there from Xavi as well. And lastly, Xavi concluded off by saying that tomorrow, I hope the grass will be at the standard side. Playing at 10 p.m., though, does favor us. And that concluded Xavi's press conference reaction had the match against Rio Vallecano tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. Gross off for the manager, of course, Xavi Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict this lineup. I think it will be very difficult to predict. Of course, midweek game. We got a game against uh, Betis on Saturday. But we are playing like once a week. So you don't really have to heavy rotate. Boost is suspended. What will Xavi do? I think Xavi will go with this lineup on the screen right now. I think he'll go with their Stegen in goal. A back four of Kunde, Arujo, Marcus Alonso, and Alejandro Balde. Midfield three of De Jong, Gavi, and Pedri. And in front three of Rafinha, Lewandowski, and Ferran Torres. I think the front three set in stone. I think the midfield is also set in stone. I think he will go with De Jong with the assets of Busquets. The question is, will he start Pedri? Is Pedri fit to start a game now after coming on for half an hour against Atletico Madrid? I'm not quite too sure, but I think we're at a point now in the season where those risks are willing to be taken. Back five, I think we'll stay the exact same because again, Eric Garcia didn't really show much to replace Alonso. We could maybe see Jordi Alba to give Baldi some rest, but I think that right back and right center back with Aruho and Kunde will stay set in stone for this match. And with that being said, with Busquets uh, suspended, Roberto injured, and Jordi Alba most likely not going to start, it will be just taken with the captain's armband for this match. And that's the other thing that Xavi Hernandez will select for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Xavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And I have made one change from Xavi's lineup prediction, and that is in defense. Alonso, just I don't fancy him whatsoever. I have gone with the risk and put Balde at right back and brought in Jordi Alba to replace Alonso, but I've moved, of course, Jordi Alba to his natural left back position. I think this team just looks more aesthetic, just looks even more stronger on paper than the previous one with Marcus Alonso in the defense. I don't think against Atletico Madrid, he didn't play too, uh, too well as well. Got a yellow card, was lacking for pace, even though Rey Vallecano, they're not really too fast 
in their uh, final third, especially with their forward line, but it's a risk that I'm not willing to take. I think bailing Baldi at right back is a bit a big risk. He hasn't played there since like what October, November, but he has experience there nonetheless. And I would go with that again. Same midfield three for me. Same front three. The best players on form right now. I'd probably consider rotation against Betis. I think Rio Vallecano is way more of a difficult big game. Betis on a Saturday late night kickoff at the Cap Now. So this would be the team that I would pick if I was the manager. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you'd rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I've yet again sat my arse right on the fence and I have gone Barcelona drawing this match nil nil. I was gonna predict the Barcelona victory, but that Chavi press conference has not given me confidence. He's saying the game is gonna be a late kickoff, a uh, small pitch, we don't know how the, how tall the grass is, and he was saying Chavi himself that I don't think Barcelona is gonna play well in this match. It's gonna be a very, very scrappy game. That for me does not put confidence in me. I do think there's a better chance that Barcelona win this match already by Akano, but in their stadium, small pitch, the fans are very, very close. We haven't done there. We haven't done well there. Of course, the last time we were there, our manager got sacked an hour after the result. So things don't really bode well for Barcelona. I really hope we overcome those odds. I think again, a draw is not a very poor result. I think what happened today with Madrid would definitely have a factor. Madrid dropped points against Gerona. I think a draw will be set in stone, but if Real Madrid win, I think Barcelona will have that extra motivation, hopefully, to go out there tomorrow and get the result. But I do think a draw is the most likely outcome, and I have gone Barcelona during this match. Nil-nil, maybe a 1-1 worst-case scenario, but of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think your score prediction is. So that was my match preview for Rayo Vallecano versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, and of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed but the main thing i want to first see of course is your score prediction and secondly on those lineups firstly would i pick my lineup or chavi's lineup what do you think chavi would go with what would you go with through the manager leave me all your thoughts down below and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already and i'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch the game with me follow after the match by match review so i'll see you guys tomorrow big game ahead and hopefully we'll take one step closer to clenching the league title take care and force a barca Barcelona, Barcelona.